Today, we are going to do the easiest take-in of your life. As you can see, we've got a really cute dress here. It's actually quite flattering already in the front because we've got a cinch coming across and tying in the front. That's great. But we've got an issue. Look at all of this. So even though we have a tie in the waist that should be cinching this in, it doesn't cinch it through the back. So how can we remove all of this extra baggy material really easy and really quick? Everyone's favorite trick, elastic. Elastic is really uh, an awesome, interesting tool, but there are some really important things about it. And one is this, when you want to put elastic in a garment, the garment must be bigger than you need it to be. So I get asked all the time, if a garment is too small, why can't I just like put elastic in it and ta-da, it'll be bigger. Cause it just doesn't work that way. If you sew elastic to something that is too small already, the elastic essentially just becomes fabric again and doesn't stretch and doesn't have room to stretch. What's happening when we put elastic into this waist seam is exactly what it looks like. Oh, <laughs> it's gonna cinch it and make it evenly gathered straight across the back. So we're gonna cut a piece of elastic that is smaller than this waistline. We've got the dress up here on the table now, so we're ready to place our elastic. But that brings up the second most important point in this procedure. So one, again, the item has to be too big to be able to put the elastic in. And number two, it needs to have a waist seam. So this dress has, exactly like it looks, a seam going all the way around the waist. The reason this is important is because for this really easy procedure, it makes it much cleaner to attach the elastic to the seam allowance of a pre-existing seam. So we're gonna jump to the back of our garment, which is the section that's too big, and take a look at that seam. We only have a quarter inch of seam allowance in there. So I have appropriately chosen a quarter inch wide elastic. Now, how do I get the measurement on the piece of elastic? First, we know that it needs to be smaller than the actual waist seam because that's how we're gonna eat, shrink it in. But how do I know how long I want it to be? Well, that's a trick. I already did this with the client. So I actually measured from waist seam to waist seam across the back because I knew I wanted to do it this way and I got her true measurement. So this is going to be about 16 inches for my case with only about a quarter inch of seam allowance on either end of the elastic to attach it into the seam. So now we're gonna do one of my favorite little procedures for placing elastic perfectly every time, which is we're gonna start by folding it in half. And I'm gonna place this center point right here, which is at the center point of the dress. And I know that because I have a center back seam. If you don't have a center back seam, you can jump and put one end of your elastic straight on the side seam and do this this way as well. What we're going to do is called quartering. And quartering is basically placing a stretchy, maybe piece of elastic, a cuff or something like that, equally into a larger section of a garment. And we're trying to space out the stretch and the gather so that they fit together and also look uniform and awesome. I have a circular video on this where I do this with a sweatshirt cuff and that is the perfect example of quartering. So take a look at that video, we'll link it up here. And this is a flat version of that where we're only going from point A to point B and not making a complete circle. Same kind of principle, but a little bit different. So let's start over here at our side seam where we just pinned this. I've got a straight pin holding that in place right over there. Now I'm gonna go all the way over to the other side and stretch it and pin that. Now we'll be able to see that we've got some slack in the garment that hangs in between 
that elastic. And that is what we're going to beautifully and evenly cinch in. So how am I gonna do that? Well, I am gonna stretch these points until the elastic and the fabric are even. So the elastic is stretched right now, but the dress is not stretched right now. And then if I wasn't on camera, I would probably bite this with my teeth. I'm just gonna be totally honest with you. That is really like the third hand in sewing. I think we all know it. But because I am on camera, I'm gonna just like walk my fingers in like this is normal so that I can grab that center point. Now, at this point you might be thinking, um, quartering is like chunks of four, right? So three points is really like not quartering. Yes, I know, but the general term still applies. We are simply trying to place the pins evenly between each point so that we've got a nice smooth seam. Now I'm going to take these two points that I got my center and my side on and do it again. I'm stretching until the elastic meets the fabric, but the fabric is not stretched itself. And again, without the teeth, we're just gonna put a pin, you know, keep it really nice and clean. And then one more time on the other side. Now, if you're feeling comfortable with just your three pins, you're good. You don't have to put more in, but I really want this to be, like I said, uniform, sleek, beautiful. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in five. So this is now ready to sew. If you can see, you've got little bubbles of fabric in between each point where the elastic is pinned, again, to that seam allowance. That's really important. Those little bubbles of fabric should look relatively uniform. They should look like they're about the same amount of fabric dipping in between each pin. That's how we know it's gonna be uniform. And then again, just to test it, if I stretch it like this, it should be perfectly spaced. Okay, we are ready to take this over to the sewing machine. We're gonna start by securing the elastic to the side seam. So I'm actually gonna sew a perpendicular stitch to the direction of stretch to secure this to that seam allowance. Now, really important note here is we are sewing entirely to the seam allowance. So the fact that the elastic is black and the thread is black matching the elastic doesn't matter because we will never see this stitching from the outside of the garment. If you do see stitching, you did it wrong. So pay attention. We're gonna do just a little stitch right there. Okay, cool. Now we're ready to flip up this seam allowance. And this is the tricky part. We do have to stretch a little as we sew. That's how we get that uniform hold. So I'm gonna get as close to that seam allowance on the side as possible. And then I'm gonna reach down to my next pin and pull, again, not stretching the dress, only stretching the elastic and only as far as it needs to go for the two to match up. And then one last thing before I sew, I'm gonna look underneath and make sure that I don't have any fabric gathered up underneath there. We want a nice smooth stitch that does not show anywhere. Okay, cool. And then we're just gonna aim one at a time toward the next pin. So when I get to that pin, I'll take it out, but not before because that'll mess up all of our really crucial spacing that we did over at the table. Great. And then I'm gonna aim for my next guy. And I'm really just sewing straight down the center, honestly. I mean, nothing crazy with the quarter inch you don't really have a lot of room and the more stitching lines you put, the more you're stretching out the elastic so the less cinch and gather you're getting. So I'm really just gonna put one single stitching line straight down the center. Great. And again, I can't overemphasize, do not overstretch. You are only stretching enough to be able to make the elastic and the fabric meet. That is it. Oh, 
Okay, we are almost there. And as we get closer to the other side seam, that's when you might get some like fabric underneath. So let's stop about half an inch, three quarters of an inch out and secure our perpendicular line again. Then if we can get back in there, if we can, we'll try to get a little bit closer just cause that would be nice. Perfect. We're over at the iron now. And the reason I like to press this out is because it really gives you a good idea of how well you were able to quarter and gather. And look at this, all of these little beautiful gathers should look relatively uniform across the back. And it should lift up just like this, meaning that you didn't catch any of the fabric of the dress other than stitching that elastic to the seam. So one line of stitching is gonna do it. I think that that's plenty enough. Let's flip to the outside and see what that looks like. Perfect. Oh, I love this. We have no stitching and we can give that another press here. Again, just to see how we did. And totally functional. We want that stretch. We want that comfort in the dress. But now, no matter what direction she ties these ties, she's still gonna have a nice uniform cinch straight across the back. So the last test here is we're gonna put it back on our dress form to kind of get a sneak peek of what it's gonna look like on the customer. And now for the big reveal, let's see. Let's see if it looks any better. Lovely. Oh, I love that. Not too tight. Of course I could make it tighter. So I'll try this next on the customer and see, is that enough? Or would she like me to shorten the elastic piece even more and really bring that puppy in? All of that is possible. All we would have to do is remove that single line of stitching through the elastic and cut another inch or two off and put it right back on just like we did. So this is endlessly adjustable. 10 minute procedure and the elastic does not need to be a matching color. We only keep black, white, and a little bit of clear in the shop. So because this is a totally internal procedure, doesn't even matter if you have a matching color. It's perfect, it's easy. It is the best way, my favorite way to take an address. So ask me questions, leave me little comments, like, subscribe, all the stuff, and we'll see you soon. Thank you.